In this screencast, I want to talk about another problem for which there's a good greedy solution. And the problem I'm going to talk about is one of a number of problems called scheduling problems. And they're important in computer science, and there are lots of different versions of them. Um, generally speaking, what a scheduling problem is, is you're given a set of jobs, J1 through JN, say, and they're characterized by some parameters. And those parameters could be uh, the length of the job, uh, the possible weights of the job, when the deadline for the job is, etc. There are all sorts of possibilities. Um, and generally what you want to do is have, you'll have some objective function, something you're trying to maximize or minimize, and you want to get the ordering or a subset of the jobs that need to be serviced by the resource and maximize or minimize the objective function. So you've all so we've already seen this in one of the previous videos. If you watched it on interval scheduling, on interval scheduling that scheduling problem, we characterized each job by its start time and end time. So we had an interval. We had a single processor, and we wanted to maximize the number of jobs that we could run on that processor without any of the jobs overlapping. That was uh, relatively straightforward. If you remember, we used a stay-ahead argument to prove the greedy algorithm that uh, ordered the jobs in earliest finish time first was correct. And that's the sort of thing that we're going to try to do here today in the screencast. But we're going to do it for a slightly different scheduling problem. So one scheduling problem I want to just, just touch briefly on is uh, trying to minimize the completion time or finish the schedule as soon as possible. Now, if you think about it, um, the completion time of a single job doesn't depend on the schedule of all the jobs. I'm sorry. The completion time of all the jobs from one to end does not depend on the schedule, right? It's just the sum of the lengths of all the jobs. So the problem we're going to look at instead is total time to completion. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the completion times of each job and then add those up. So it will be the total the time that all the jobs spend in the system, including their wait times. So let's look at that problem in a little more detail. So we want to look at the total time to completion. So the first thing we need to do is define the completion time of a job. The completion time of the job is just going to be the sum of the lengths of all the jobs that come before it up to including that job. So that makes sense. And then what we're going to try to minimize is the total time to completion, where CI represents the amount of time that the ith job spends in the system, including its wait time and processing time. So we're going to add all those up. So pause and think about how to schedule the jobs. Does it matter? Does it matter? And if it does matter, do you do short jobs first or long jobs first? So again, take a few seconds and think about how you, how you should order the jobs to minimize the total time to completion. Okay, so how do you do this sort of issue? How do you decide what the potentially good way to order the jobs is. Well, generally speaking, what you want to do is find a nice simple example, try the smallest examples you can think of, and just see what happens. So in this case, let's just assume we have two jobs. Job one is one unit long, job two is two units long. So that's pretty easy. And then we're going to get the total time to completion of job one followed by job two. Well, job one is going to complete after one unit of time, and then job two will complete after Job one runs, and then job two runs. So that'll be three units altogether. So that'll take four units of time. If we order the jobs in the other way, with job two first and job one second, then job two will complete after two units of time, and job one, again, will complete after three units of time, which gives you five. So this indicates we most likely want to do the shorter jobs first. And then the question would be, can you prove this greedy algorithm is correct in general? Now, I don't expect you necessarily to be able to do it right now, but after the next screencast, when I uh, go through proofs, a specific kind of proofs for scheduling problems, um, you should be able to do it.
But now let's head off and get to work on the real problem we want to study today. So the problem we want to look at is sometimes referred to as total weighted time to completion. So now we characterize the jobs by their lengths and by their weights. And what we want is a schedule, so an ordering of the jobs that minimizes the total weighted time to completion. So we've got to know what that means. What does that mean? Well, scheduling, again, is just an ordering of jobs. The completion time, just like in the last example, is just the sum of the LJs up to and including the LI. And then the total weighted time to completion is a little different than what we considered in the last problem. And that is, instead of just adding up all the completion times, this, way, this problem, we're going to add up the weights of the of the i job times the i job's completion time. So this is a little more complex situation. So again, before we try to come up with any kind of greedy algorithm, let's think about some simple situations and try to understand uh, what's going on. So first of all, let's take three jobs where the respective lengths are job one is length one, job two is length two, and job three is length three. What are the completion times of the three jobs if done in the order given? So in other words, if you do job one, job two, job three, what's the completion times of the three jobs? So take a few seconds, try to figure out which one of A, B, C, or D is correct. So take a few seconds and decide whether A, B, C, or D is the correct order, uh, order of the completion times. So, C is the correct one. If you think about it, job one will finish after it's of length one, so it'll finish at time one. Job two has length two, so that'll be one plus two, that'll complete after time three. And job three has length three, so it will complete at length six. Notice, uh, looking at these simple examples can be misleading in the sense that if you had n jobs, there are lots of orderings you'd have to look at. In fact, n factorial number of orderings. So, finding a greedy algorithm that solves this problem. I want to focus in the rest of this screencast on the process for trying to find the greedy algorithm that you think is going to be correct. So, again, remember the goal is to find a sequence of a set of jobs that minimizes the total weighted time to completion. Um, so, what are we going to do? Uh, we're going to look at some special cases, generate some candidate greedy algorithms from looking at those special cases, and then try to then narrow them down to a single candidate, um, and then hopefully be able to prove correctness. So now I want you to look at some special cases. Um, remember the jobs are characterized by their length and their weights, so look at the special case for equal lengths, and look at the special case for equal weights. Try to come up with some simple examples of uh, maybe two jobs and one example where the jobs have equal lengths and the other example where the job has equal weights and see what you can learn from them. In other words, answer this question. What order do you think that you should schedule the jobs first? You should schedule the jobs. Larger weights first, shorter lengths first, smaller weights first, shorter lengths first, etc. So which one of these four do you think is the right characterization of how you should be scheduling the jobs. So again, before you move on, uh, pause the slides and think about uh, some examples and see if you can decide which one of these is correct. So here's this uh, example case uh, problem, small problem, where their lengths are equal to jobs. Job one is of length one and weight one. Job two is of length one but it has weight too. So the lengths are equal, weights are different. If you do uh, the total weighted time to completion, there should be a W in there, sorry. Total weighted time to completion of job one and job two, that ordering, job one first, then job two. Job one will have weighted time to completion of one. Job two will have weighted time to completion. It finishes, time to completion is two, times two is four, so that gives you five. If you do job two first, then it will have a weighted time to completion of two, and then do job one second. Now it will finish at time two, but it only has weight one, so that'll be another two, so that'll be four. Okay, so this seems to imply you want to do heavier jobs early. That's the schedule where we do the heavier job first. 
If you have equal weights, okay, here's our example where equal weights, now the weights for both jobs are one, but the lengths of the jobs are different. And if we do the total weight of time to completion of job one and job two, uh, that's going to be one plus three, which is equal to four, right? Because the second job will finish at time three. And times one gives you the three, so one plus three is four. And if you do the second job first, then it will be uh, two, right? Because its length is two and weight is one, okay? And then the... Job one will complete at time three, and it only has weight one, so that will be three. So that's two plus three, and that's five. So now it looks like you want to do the shorter jobs earlier. Okay, so you want larger weights earlier, shorter lengths earlier. So now the question is, how can you combine that information to come up with some way of ordering the jobs that will capture both of those things? So again, stop and think about that for a few seconds before you move on. So how can we combine this information that we have into a greedy algorithm? Well, there are two relatively simple options. One is to take the difference between the weight and the length. Okay, so now the larger the weight, the earlier, the smaller the length, the earlier, because we're going to subtract it off. Okay, so we'll order this in decreasing order by weight minus length. And this same thing here, we'd order it by decreasing order of weight over length. Again, if the weight's bigger, the ratio will be bigger. If the length is smaller, the ratio will be bigger. Okay, so what do we need to do? We need to find an example where the two different algorithms, ordering by difference versus ordering by ratio, give two different answers. If, the, if we can do that, then we know that the one that had the larger solution is not optimal, and we can rule it out. And then we can focus our efforts on trying to prove the algorithm that gives the smaller solution. It may not, we may not be able to do that, but uh, that's what we'll hope for. And in this particular case, we will be able to prove that the algorithm that gives the smaller solution is actually correct. So let's consider two jobs. Uh, job one will um, have length one and weight five. So the difference here would be four weight minus length, and the ratio would be 5. Here's another one where the difference is now 8, okay, but the ratio is only 3. Okay. So in this case, the difference will have us pick this job first and this job second. The ratio here is 5, so we'll do this job first versus the ratio here being 3. So we get two different orderings uh, given this set of jobs, depending on which algorithm. So now if we do out all the calculation, again, um, the difference for job one is four, and the ratio is five. Job two, the difference is eight but the ratio is three. So for job, the different, for the difference, we'll do job two first, and then job one. For the ratio, we'll do job one first, and then job two. So if you do those calculations, make sure you know how to do the calculations. You, for this ordering, uh, for the uh, total weighted time to completion for this ordering, is gonna be 48 plus 25, which is 73, whereas, the total weighted time to completion for the ratio ordering is going to be 5 plus 65, which is 65, 60, which is 65. So the difference does not always yield the optimal solution, namely the smallest total weighted time to completion. And our only remaining candidate now is the ratio of the weight of the job over the length of the job. And the question is, will that give us the smallest total weighted time to completion? That will be the topic of the next screencast in this series.